What is going on guys? This is KaneAsty3090 here. Welcome back to another Miami Marlins Franchise Rebuild Episode 11, Year 5. Hopefully this year we make the playoffs. Last year we won 90 games, we missed playoffs by one game. So in the offseason, we got an ace. Jose Barrios, we've calling up our best pitching prospect in Alfonso. We made some trades to get Irizarry and Ciszek. Out of the pen, we moved Caleb Smith to a reliever. We were able to sign Sixto Sanchez to a long-term deal. So we're in pretty good shape. And the lineup, we did let Buxton go. We called up Kalenic, Um, And then we traded Alfaro, so we have Zerati playing every day. Tippett is also going to be playing every day. He's going to be leading off. Um, now, he does have some power, but he should get on base. And I'm just looking like, I don't know, is there a guy who gets on base at a better clip than him? Yeah, he's going to hit for home runs. But he's gonna get on base. So I wanted him there. Um, so let's get into the season. Their division looks to be tough. So hopefully we don't have some bad injuries. And uh, we continue to draft well and develop and churn out these prospects. So we gotta make sure the minor league rosters are good. Uh, Roker is a C potential. Jones is a C. So that's fine. And Kiri Ramirez, we want him playing over Moreno, who is a C potential who can hit. But I would... Well, Diaz is a B potential to want him. And then Banfield. I guess he, unfortunately, is not really much of a spot for him. Batista. Yeah, we'll put him over that. There. And then... Batista. There we go. And let's just check the minor league rotations. Okay. And that's fine. We got some good prospects, too, in the minors for pit for bullpen help. So let's continue. And we're going to have like the 21st pick in this year's draft. So not a high pick. <laughs> we're not playing too hot though. We're 9-11. and 11. Pablo Lopez up for a few days. Okay, that's nothing too serious. He's back. Jeez, we just lost the game 13 to nothing. But we are starting to win. One to two months for Tim Miza. So let's... Uh, Alright, um, we're going to have to call up someone. And I will probably call up... Joe Smith is pitching great. Um, Roger Williams is not. So, Joe Smith, welcome to the show. And uh, I'm not sure if he's ever going to get sent back down. He's 25, 84 overall. Alfonso's struggling a little bit as a, as a rookie, which is pretty typical. Irizarry's pitched well. Trian's been okay. Cishek has actually struggled. Bryce has pitched well. Caleb Smith has not been great. Um, how about the Lion? The lineup. Not the Lion. Tippett's in 310, only three home runs with a 416 on base. Tony gets on base. Anderson, 323 average, 403 on base, seven home runs. And then Seeger is then just hitting bombs, hitting 288 with 10 home runs. 324 for Dahl with six. 211 for Jock, that's not great. Only seven home runs. Zarate, 321, nice. Four home runs, that's more than he got all last year. Kalenic struggling 160. Barreto's in 237. And Pache's playing only a limited amount. 72 at bats, actually. It's not too bad. Um, does he play with no DH? Oh, he does. Over Jock Peterson. Actually, makes sense because Jock struggles against lefties. Um, so, yeah. And Josh Naylor's in 327 with three home runs and 52 at bats. Uh, he is a vital bench bat for us. Okay, right, now we're starting to win some games. Or we're doing, we had a very good month of May. We are at the draft, so we have the 21st pick. Competitive balance, we have a pick there. So we have the 31st pick in the draft. Round two, we don't have that pick. Compensatory pick, so that's, I guess, for losing Vasquez. Um, and then round three, the 21st pick. To be fair, we couldn't give Buxton a qualifying offer, so I guess that's fair. All right, no one who's a blue chipper. Now, this guy is a project. Kenny McCormick. Um, average injury risk, some good fielding, good speed, steal, some solid contact. I don't have a problem taking him. Evan White. Okay. I don't think he's going to have a crazy potential. They usually don't when they're ready soon. His low injury risk could have 70 and 75 contact, 65 and 70 power, 80 vision, low injury risk, 65 feeling, a great arm, more of a right fielder, 60 speed. I got to take him unless there's anyone else. Okay, we're taking Evan White. I, do, I doubt his potential is more than like an 83. And I'm going to take McCormick with that pick. He's going to probably be a, a higher potential, but it's going to take a little bit more time than White. So compensatory round now. Um, Let's see what's here. 
Ooh, a starter not greatly scouted. Could be good, though. But let's see. I could take a guy who's 23 as a project. I could take a guy who's 23 who could be ready soon. Great watch per night. Yeah, I'm going to take Pete Cowan. Even though um, he's four years older, he's slightly better scouted. But if Pedro Cortez is available later on... Wait, did he just get taken? Nope, he has not been taken yet. Come on. Come, I think he's available. He is. I hope he's good. We'll find out in a minute. Round four. Um, I could take... I probably will take Nelson Artulo. Or Garrett Peterson. They're both 19. 75 on the potential. 80 walks per nine. Like that. This guy has... Okay, yeah. I'm definitely going to take... Nelson Artulo. I doubt he's going to have an A potential, but he could still be very good. Um, if you're drafted with the B potential, good per nines, I don't have a problem with that. In this pick, I'm just going to take a shot in the dark with someone. There is a catcher. Low injury risk. Why not? He's 19. If you hit with catching prospects, they always have extra value. In our last pick, we got three shots in the dark. I'm going to take the one who's closest to be ready, who's a starter. I doubt he's going to be that good, but Garrett Devino, why not? And that's going to be our draft, so let's see how we did. After we win a game, you probably know that. I always wait till we win. We're winning the division, by the way, by a game and a half. We are just so freaking good at drafting. Evan White's going to be a star. 74 overall, 89 potential. He has 84 durability. Thank God. 54 fielding. He has good arm. I, if he has right as a secondary position, I'm probably going to end up moving him to right. He can even maybe play center with that 61 speed. Great vision at 75, so he's not going to strike out much. The contact and power would develop. He's only 21, but he could be ready very soon. Kenny McCormick, who I thought was going to be a safer pick, only has 84 potential. I mean, he's a long-term project away, but, I mean, whatever. Pete Cowan has 84 potential. He's 72 overall. He's 23. Uh, good walks per nine, which I liked. So we'll see what happens. Um, Pedro Cortez. Glad we got him. Again, pretty good per nines. He's 19, 65 overall. 82 potential. Nelson Artulo has 84 potential. Look at that walks per nine. This guy, and he was a 75 potential. Look at this. 19 years old, a 72 overall, with an 84 potential, 95 stamina, 85 walks per nine. We know that's important. That is a great pick. Uh, Johnny Ortiz has 76 potential, but he has some good attributes. He can he can play every day. He can hit lefties, and he has good vision. So maybe he becomes a backup. I don't know. And then Davino, why not? He has an 80 potential at the end. So no A's. But we had one, two, three, four, five, six B's, and then one C, and then an 89 is one of them. And I think we have two guys who could be studs: and Evan White and Nelson Artulo. I think those are my favorite picks of the draft. Um, let's see what else was out there. Calderon. Okay, 89. I, don't, I haven't seen an A yet. There we go. Philip Ramirez. And I like his per nines. This is, was a weak draft that we nailed. Salazar. And he's a project. But yeah, 93 potential. But like I said, this draft did not look that good. A closer with 97 potential. Yeah, I mean, 91 potential closer. Oscar, okay, he looks really good. Oscar Mesa, yeah, he's a really good, he's the best player I've seen. 93 potential, 70 overall, 21 years old. You can argue Evan White's one of the best prospects that was taken in this draft. And we got him at pick 21. We have been drafting so well. I definitely need to do like a draft only franchise eventually. And I will come up with a tip video of my logic behind this. Because you guys know I don't actually do the scouting. David Dahl's out for one to two weeks. But there's still a method to my madness. Um, and I, will, I try to explain it um, when I do the drafting. But maybe I go in-depth for people. So if they just want to see quick little what am I doing, my thought logic, I'll definitely come up with that. We have one too many guys up on the show. Um, Joe Keith has pitched great, so I'm not going to send him down. I might send down uh, Caleb Smith. But who could be our long man? Anyone have like 40 stamina as a reliever? No. Um, or we can just send down a bat. Pompey's only had four at bat. There's no reason to have him up on here.
Let's make sure they didn't screw up the line. Yeah, see, they screwed up the whole lineup around. Um, I want Tippett leading off. Um, Dahl there. <sighs> hate it when they do this. Why? I don't know. Josh Naylor's amazing this year. Holy cow. Like, Dahl's back. What the hell are you guys doing? <laughs> Kristen Pache is actually really struggling against lefties. I'm going to have Josh Naylor bat versus lefties. And Kalenic is still struggling. Oh, man. I'm going to put Josh Naylor in the outfield. I'm going to move um, Jock to center. That's what I'm going to do. Josh Naylor is hitting his way into this lineup. Jock's going to play center. He's not the best. We're definitely taking a shot at defense. We really don't have much speed out there. I guess Dahl is probably the best, actually. But Josh Nina has to play left, um, just because it's the only position he has other than first. Jock can play center, and Dahl can play all three. So we'll do that. But Josh Naylor, I mean, the way he's hitting, I'm going to have him down the lineup a little bit because I'm not sure he'll keep that up, but he deserves to keep playing. So we are winning the division by five and a half games. Let's go through the All-Star game and see how we're doing. Nationals interest in trade. Clint Frazier for Eldridge Colvin, who we just drafted. Um, eight potential. Clint Frazier. He does have the eight potential, but he's a 70 overall. I'm good on that one. We should have a lot of... I'm going to say... Four all-star players. Jack flirted for Eloy Jimenez and Josh. What are you doing? Oakland, you gave up on Eloy? Big mistake. All right, let's see. I said four is what I'm shooting for. Barrios is one. Lopez is two. Two, three ERA for Lopez. Damn. And then Barrios has that 204 ERA. And he's improving. There's two. Um, Tryon makes it three. Brian Anderson. So there's four, and I think we're going to have at least Seager. There's five. Kettle Marte made it. Oh, interesting. Yeah, we had five All-Stars. I believe that's called good. Take a look at top prospects. Charles Hudson's now number three above Preston Ponder. I do like him, though. But <laughs> he's been healthy. Hudson, which is what we were worried about, so he's continuously improving. Crowell's at 13. He's actually kind of uh, not had the best year yet. Jay Groom is at 17. Uh, Coleridge, or Eldridge Colvin, excuse me. He is at 30. Tommy Hammonds jumped up to 35. Kerry Ramirez, he's out with a broken foot, but he was improving quite a bit. He is 25. He's not really young. Roger Ramirez, a closer who has been struggling in the minors at 49. So, yeah, it's nice to see that we have... Um, oh, where was that center fielder that we traded um, to the Rockies for the David Dahl trade? That we were going to trade Kalenic, and now Kalenic is struggling mightily. He got benched, for now at least. But I don't even see that guy on the Rockies. Maybe he got... Um, called up but I have to give Josh Naylor a chance to play the dude's just been mashing I don't you if I say no to a trade in a week later you're like so have you thought about that trade uh okay Jordan Hicks is going to the A's A's are making some interesting moves Zerati got injured for just a few days um we are at the trade deadline our lineup probably got completely effed around oh no He's only hit 253, but he's improving. His potential is going up and his overall. But I'm not loving the, his stats this year. Tippett is hitting, what, 287, 14 home runs. So he's hoping for a little bit more power, but he gets on base. Seager's in 320 with 30 home runs. Naylor's in 301 with 13. Barreto's in 271 with 8. Um, Do we need to make any moves? 
I don't think so. C-check is struggling. We have a lefty in the pen. I don't think we need to make any moves. We're winning by six and a half games. I think we're fine. We can finish the year. Oh, and we're... How many games in a row have we won? 11 in a row. We now have a 10-game lead. Holy cow. That was a 13-game winning streak. So, yeah. Uh, oh, my God. Zerade, this was the... This was the... Uh, I mean, we knew this could happen. Um, Alex Jackson has struggled. How about in AAA? BJ Lopez has not done well. Double A, we have Tommy Ham, who's not ready. So we're going to have to call up just BJ Lopez because we need to call up another catcher. Banfield's in... Or we could call it Banfield, but Lopez is... Jackson's going to play every day. No, I'm going to call it Banfield. Let's give him a... Let's give him a chance. Why not? Just why not? We have a full 40-man. Well, we're going to release Wallet from it. We're going to designate him. We move from the 40-man. Um, we're going to add you to the 40-man. Let's give the kid a chance. He was, he was hitting in our Orioles one. He will be batting 8th or 9th, depending if we're in the American League or National League, but why not? I mean, we can go with Alex Jackson, who's struggling, but let's give the kid a chance. I mean, we know what Alex Jackson is. Hopefully, he's back for the playoffs. That's the big thing. Baltimore claimed him, whatever. He was a 29-year-old catcher. All right, more injuries. Alfonso's improving quite a bit. He's now an 83 overall. In his first year, 470 ERA, you hope that continues. Six still, though, he's now a 90 overall. Which I, was, I always feel like he wasn't going to perform well in prior franchises, but yeah, in this one, he's been great. Which is good. Good for us. I just realized something. I just had them... They probably completely screwed around our lineup. No, actually, it didn't. Um, so let's finish this season. Um, we are comfortably, I believe, winning the division. Oh, my God. It's not going to affect us this year much. That could have just ended his career. I tore in Lady Room. All right, um, Trevor Rogers, I guess we'll go in. God damn it. I wish it would just say if it was career ending or not. Also, Keegan Thompson got a big injury, but Ah, uh, it's a shame. Hudson's at six now. Ponder's at seven. They're, they're always going to be linked in this franchise. Are we going to get 100 wins? We should. Oh, Zerati's back. Perfect. Just in time. Um, How did... Uh, where is he? Well, uh, Banfield 212. So I'm glad to get Zerati back. Actually, I'm going to... Oops, he was already in. Um, I'm going to have him probably bat at the bottom of the lineup. Because Barreto's actually doing having a very good year. 283 with 15 home runs. For making 3.2 million, his war is what? 1.7? That's not bad. Corey Seager is probably going to get MVP. We actually might get MVP and Cy Young. 100 wins and 62 losses. We had the best record in the National League because we're playing the wild card winner, which is going to be the Mets or the Giants. Any other teams win 100? Angels. And then 105. So, let's see how the team did. Um... We really don't even have like a, an extra starter, which is fine. I'll just throw Caleb Smith in there. Barrios probably going to get Cy Young. 22-5, 234 innings pitched, 223 strikeouts, a 2-2-70 array, a 101 whip, 99 overall. That was a great signing. Pablo Lopez is going to be our number three because I just saw six of those stats real quick. Uh, very good, though, for the 27-year-old. Um, and he's got one more year making 3.8. He's going to be a free agent, and then we're going to get a draft pick for him. <laughs> 
Uh, but he had a great year. 6 0 2 9 7 ERA for the kid. We, we gotta, gave him a long-term deal. It's actually going up every year in terms of contract, which I thought was fair. Um, but he looks to be a superstar. Coming back after that big-time injury in 2021. Alcantara, a 4 ERA as number 4 starter. That's reasonable. His career ERA is 4 2 one And Caleb Smith was uh, the long man. He's been like good and bad, good and bad. Um, Bryce pitched okay. c Shick did struggle a little bit. Joe Keith did great once he got called up. Miza was great. Irizarry was great. He's probably our future closer. And Tryon was good. How many saves did Tryon have? I'm going to say 48. I did not look at that. That was complete luck. Drop a like on the video because I just got that. Tip it hit 297. 26 home runs. His average went up 50 points. His on base was went up 50 points. Slugging went up 40 points. Now, he, now with his durability at 66... He played in 150 games. That's actually not bad. I, now, eh, that could be a little skewed. Because what if he his durability is low, but then he pinch hits for the pitcher? That counts as a game. Um, so just keep that in mind. But still, not bad. Brian Anderson, 292, 377 on base, 21 home runs. Not bad. His war was 5.8. Seager, you can argue he's going to get MVP. 311, 46 home runs. 408, 406 on base, 590 slugging, OPS of almost 1,000, a war of 9-7. David Dahl, nice comeback year for him after getting injured at the end of last year. 29 home runs, 283 average, OPS of 888, a war of 1-5. Jock, 261, 25 home runs. He's pretty much consistent, around 260 average, around 25 home runs. Uh, Zarate, you know, he got hurt, so he only played 106 games. He did hit 8 home runs. Also stole 10 bags at 257, war of 2.1, but his, I mean, he improved quite a bit, and his potential's going up, so, I mean, promising, just bringing up that durability. Josh Naylor hit 19 home runs and only uh, 412 at-bats. Not, that's not too bad. Slugged at 500, war of 2.6. Barreto, we saw him already, 280 with 15 home runs. I mean, definitely looks like a very good player now. His potential's continuing to go up, and he still has that very team-friendly deal. He's only 27, and Kalinic did struggle quite a bit. Um, and there's the bench. Pache. He, I'm not sure what we'll do with him. Maybe he's a trade chip. He does have that great potential. Let's take a look at top prospects. Actually, I think we just looked at it. Yeah, there's Crowell, who actually didn't improve a ton. His potential went down. He's an 80 overall. It's kind of a shame. Um, Conforto got MVP. Barrios did get Cy Young. What? Sixty-three home runs for Brandon freaking Nemo. Are you out of your mind? He had twenty-four the year before. <laughs> Sixty-three. Are you serious? One hundred and sixty-five RBIs. Oh my goodness. Do you think that's the home run record? 63, would you say that's the home run record? I'm shocked. Silver Slugger's at short. He, did, he get the, did he get the triple crown batting average? We, he had to get home runs by 15. Yeah, he got the triple crown. It's one of the best hitting seasons I've ever seen. I, I'm like stunned. 63 home runs for Brandon Nemo. I'm. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you later, boys. We'll do the playoffs the next one. Peace.